podcast. W głowie się mieści. Okay, so it's podcast Wrap Your Head Around It. My today uh, guest uh, is uh, Dr. Uh, Mavis Tsai, and uh, she is a doctor of uh, clinician, uh, clinical psychology in the University of Washington. She is also a uh, founder of Awareness, Courage and Love um, community. And she is a co-founder of Analytic Psychotherapy uh, FAP. And um, hello, maybe, and thank you that you agreed to be here with me today uh, doing uh, an interview about FAP, your work, and like all of those amazing things that you do for, for psychotherapy and for in general for us, for people. So hello. <laughs> Adam, thank you for inviting me. And we got off to a slightly rocky start with technical problems. And I would just like to take a few moments for us to connect. Yeah. Just take some breaths together. And we are very far apart, you in Poland and me on the west coast of the United States. Yeah. But we can connect. Yeah, it's through beautiful. Our, through that, our hearts. Yeah. Yeah, that we are so far. And on the one hand, on the other hand, we can be so close. Yes. Yeah, and those technical problems, they also give some, uh, yeah, some rocks on the beginning with some anxiety, worrying, and those kind of human things. <laughs> human things. Yeah, and thank you very much that you are here with me. And um, you are also an author, co-author of uh, the book that is also published in Poland about functional analytic psychotherapy. It's in Polish? It's been translated to Polish? Yeah, it's been translated uh, to Polish. And um, I think that uh, Joanna, that uh, meet us together, she were also the consultant of the translation and of the book. Yeah, Jana was actually here as a visiting okay. scholar at University of Washington a number wow. of years ago, and she's very special, I think, to both of us. Yeah, she's like a connection yeah, between uh, yeah, here in Poland and uh, FAP, the FAP community. So you had invited me to talk to your audience about FAP, and, and I said, Yes, I'm happy to talk about FAP, but I would rather have an experiential demonstration between us. And you were so gracious to say yes. Yeah. Are you are you okay with me sharing a few slides about FAP and then going into an interaction sure, between us? Uh, it's an honor for me, and yeah, it would be great to see a slides because, like, one of my first questions was about. Um, FAP, like the like some basics roots of FAP, and then we can go through. And I feel uh, also about it. Some uh, you know, like um, it's natural. You know, I, I I was so open to say yes, but um, I'm still so. But it's also, of course, related with some kind of you know, um, maybe some anxiety. But it's okay for me. <laughs> You're very brave because you're not sure what's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what makes it exciting for us, for you, for me, for the audience, because we don't know what's going to happen. So just want to talk very briefly about the mm -hmm. essence of FAP and how it focuses on the here and now between the therapist and the client, how that's the most powerful intervention that you can engage in. With clients. Mm -hmm. So it's based on Skinner's work. My late spouse, Robert Kohlenberg, who's the co creator of FAP, just was so enamored with Skinner. And Skinner had these powerful ideas about changing the world. And what we did was 
look at how can how can we bring those ideas into the therapy relationship into the office between a therapist and client the way that we looked at it is that behaviors that occur in interpersonal contexts because most of our clients come to us with interpersonal problems and so we're saying that the therapy relationship is well suited to provide just the natural antecedents and consequences of what these behavioral problems might be for our clients and that this behavior that they come into therapy with is more precisely and efficiently shaped when there are natural consequences right in the moment and that when you pay attention to what's happening with your clients in the moment that's when therapy is the most fascinating intense and impactful i'm sure that you're familiar with the idea of clinically relevant behaviors or crbs yes yes i've been CR- trained yeah in we've been trained in fact <laughs> so crb ones are the problematic behaviors problematic behaviors that show up in session and crb2s are the target behaviors or the improvements we make a big deal about how you can't tell by looking at a client's behavior whether it's a crb1 whether it's a problem or whether it's an improvement and so we focus on the idea of you need to look at the function of the behavior not the form not what it looks like. So behaviors that look different can be functionally equivalent. equivalent. And in this slide, you've Mm -hmm. got three people, one's just withdrawing into sadness, another is laughing hysterically, and another is yelling in anger. So it looks really different, but they could all be serving the function of distracting the therapist or avoiding talking about interpersonal closeness. Yeah, so we have a one be one like other different behaviors, but the one function, yeah, to avoid. Yes, they look intimacy. they look different, but they have the same yeah. function. Yeah, yeah. And on the other hand, Adam, behaviors that look similar may serve very different functions. And here, one they're they're both just kind of laughing. Mm-hmm. And for one person, the function of laughing might be avoiding intimacy. And for another, it could be creating intimacy. Mm-hmm. So, just want to briefly go over the five rules, and then I would love to just do a demonstration. Rule one is noticing the client's clinically relevant behaviors. So, it's being aware of what happens, what they're bringing in to the therapy session. So, if they say, I'm really depressed and I'm just not functioning well in my life. I think a lot of therapists would want to talk about how this depression is playing out in their daily lives. And FAP therapists will do that as well. But we're really looking for how does this show up in the session? How does their depressive behaviors show up? Are they shut down? Are they avoiding connecting with me? Are they just not engaging in any way? So we're just noticing how depression shows up. Here and now, too. yeah, like in in in, in the relationship with me, how it appears, yeah, this behavior. yes, okay. yes, Adam. Rule two is evoking CRBs. You don't have to do anything for CRBs to show up, but I like to authentically promote behaviors that may be difficult or challenging for the client so that we can bring it into the room more. And I'm going to be demonstrating this with you. So rule three is, is just being aware of the consequences. And I call it love because when you're bringing out the best in someone, it's, it's really loving. And loving can be kind and compassionate and warm. And loving can also be setting boundaries and But basically, it's looking for what's best for the client based on the case conceptualization, based on your agreements, and acting in ways that bring out the best in Yeah, like for little kids that we also, we love 
our kids, but we also have to set some boundaries because of love, not because we want to like punish them or something. You know? Yes. Are you a parent, Adam? Yeah, I have two daughters. <laughs> you have two daughters, so so you know the importance of loving and having expectations and having consequences mm-hmm. that are appropriate for them. <laughs> Rule four is just noticing your impact, which is more awareness. It's so so you, you know that a lot of therapists or people, yeah, they're thinking, okay, I'm going to reinforce this behavior. Well, just because you're trying to reinforce something doesn't mean that it's happening. You have you have to look to see if so the definition of reinforcing is not what you're trying to do. It's whether their behavior gets strengthened, right? Mm-hmm. So you notice that in the moment, you ask them about it, and then you look at it over time to see if it's actually what, if the behavior that you're focusing on is actually increasing in strength. Is it the rain for the, like, for example, the, the, does the attention that we like pay attention to something could be also the reinforcement because it's, it's based how we do we react. Yeah. In, Yes. Yeah. And then rule five is is really important because <clears throat> have you had have you had clients, Adam, who they do really well in session with you, but then nothing changes in their daily lives? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why rule five is so important. It's like figuring out how do we how do we generalize their improvements in it's session here, to yeah. their daily lives? Yeah. And so this involves collaborating with them to practice what's just practice their CRB2s or their improvements in session and what are the homework assignments that can help them generalize. I just want to say one more thing before we launch into mm-hmm. our experiential. That is that commonly used interventions can be inadvertently counter therapeutic. And that happens if you reinforce your clients CRB1s or or their problematic behaviors in session, or if you punish their improvements in session. This happens outside of our awareness a lot, but if, as therapists, but if you're aware of your client's CRB1s, you're less likely to reinforce them. And these are some examples taken out of context. So of course, you have to know the history of the clients and and you have to have a good case conceptualization of what are actually their ones and twos before you can be inadvertently counter-therapeutic. But these are common examples of what might be problematic. So there are clients who just talk on and on and on. And as therapists, we often let them talk on and on and on. And that might be reinforcing a CRB1. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that we let them do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like- yeah. Or they might be avoiding emotion, emotion in, in lots of different ways. And we collude with them and we let them do it. Or if they're consistently late, or if they're just not paying you, or you're not challenging them to do hard things, or you're not setting boundaries for yourself. So those are some typical examples of how you can be inadvertently counter-therapeutic by reinforcing CRB1s. And then examples of how you might be punishing client CRB2s or their improvements. This is hard. Like if they ask you something, can you change the time of my session? It might be a very difficult request. It might be an easy one in which it's okay to, mm-hmm. not, but it might be a difficult one. And so if a client makes a request that's difficult for me, I, I'm going to try to do my best or at least take it very, very seriously and explain why I might not be able to do it. Or let's say that they're making a bid for closeness. And we have there's the therapists who just they don't ever want to share anything about their personal lives. Mm-hmm. And if a, if a client is mm-hmm. not that interpersonally skilled and they're trying to be they're trying to experiment with being closer and, and they say something like, Where are you going on your vacation? And you don't respond warmly, that could be punishing an improvement. Yeah, so we or yeah, or if somebody is is like intensely emotive and that's a two for them, but you you shut it down because you're uncomfortable with your own with intensity of emotion. 
Mm-hmm. Or yeah. So for me, I I grew up with I loved I, I loved my father dearly, but he had anger issues. And I tend to not like people who are explosive in their anger. And so I might inadvertently shut that down in a client, even though they're getting in touch with their anger is a CRB too. So that was something that I had to work on for myself. I need to be very aware of my own reactions, of my own, let we say, um, or schemas or or the history of my lear- um, what I've learned from my past of my history. Yeah? So, yeah, it's uh, very I think important, yeah, and interesting that we had to pay attention to our client and to ourselves at the same time. Yeah, to know how to react properly to the what should should I how should I answer to my client? Yeah. Yes. So what I would love to do with you right Mm -hmm. now is take you through a sequence of how can we, we call this an ideal FAP interaction where you can run through all five rules in one interaction. You look a little concerned. (laughs) (laughs) You look a little concerned. So now we can observe my CRB, (laughs) CRB1. Yes. Yes. So we're going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. And then, and we can go back and forth. We can, we can talk about the process or we can just run through it. We'll see what happens. Okay. Okay, The question that I'm going to ask you is, Mm. Adam, what what do you long for? What do you yearn for in your life? And before you answer, I'm, I'm just going to remind you again that I want you to feel our connection. And I know that this is a podcast. And, and so just be comfortable with what you're going to reveal. Mm-hmm just are slightly uncomfortable. I'm not wanting you to, to like bear your soul, but talk about something that feels a little vulnerable. Mm-hmm. What, what do you, what do you long for? I long for, um, in general, I would say that it's some kind of, uh, feeling safe. Feeling mm-hmm. safe. Yeah. 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 And what does that feel like? Can you describe feeling safe to me in a way that I can feel what it's like to feel safe? For me, it means that I have like established um, my um, professional career. And uh, if I do it i mean for example that mm, mm, that i am having my like um, my clinic yeah which which i already have but um i have my like financial stability it's it, it's on the one hand something that is important that i can for me, it means the same as to like have a time, more time for my daughters, which I already like mentioned, to have a more like open mind for not solving things, thinking how I can, on the one hand, how I can improve myself to be better for my patients because I also like I think um, I do a lot of workshops Um, on the one hand I am uh, learning yeah Uh, but also I do also workshops so I would uh, I would like to work less if I have this which I mentioned this like um, a feeling safe for me it means that I uh, I can choose to 
be with my um, daughters, with my wife, and and to have an open mind to plan how we can, uh, like, what we can do together, where we can go. It would be like, this is what I mean to feel safe, that I don't have to, um, like, plan and and it's it's i think for me very um it cost me a lot of energy and and i would do more things for um for fun rather than i have to like i feel a pressure which i'm doing on myself i think a bit <laughs> let's pause and and take a breath what okay. what i observed is that this was a hard question yeah. for you. And let me see if I can summarize for you what feeling safe means. Mm -hmm. What I heard was that you really value a sense of success in your life so that you can focus on means the most to you, which is your family, being present for your daughters, being present for your wife. So it's, it's like doing well in your professional life, helping others, but, or and, you just really, really value time with your family and that and it's a sense of, okay, I've, I'm doing my best and I can provide the best for those that I love, that that's what feeling safe means? Yes, exactly. How do you feel at this moment? At this moment, I feel, um, I think that I feel, um, a little bit um it's uh, i it's not often happened to me but on the one hand i feel a little bit um, maybe it's because of podcast but i yeah i i, I feel that the really that my family is very important for me and i feel a little bit maybe um on the one hand the sadness yeah because i see that maybe i am doing more than i am yeah maybe i don't have to do such a lot of things um a bit i think i feel also a, a bit anxious too i think inside because yeah. i i i hear my voice and now i see that on the one hand this voice says that yeah you need to do more better but the other side there is something that that i have to prove something that maybe it's connected with this that you should uh, do better you should carry more you know, about the daughters some some those kinds of things mm. so it's a mix yeah. of emotions adam, I, yeah adam i really i really appreciate how transparent you are being about you're, you're very stirred up inside right now yeah wish i could be with you in person <laughs> i think that might that might help uh, yeah it would be I'm, I'm going to i'm so because this is a fap interaction yeah. I'm going to ask you, what does feeling safe mean in this moment with me? How can you cultivate a sense of safety in this moment right now with me? I think that um, I am already doing it because I am, it's, um, I'm, not often is not a good word because I all I maybe only share it with a few people and those things that I've told you just a seconds before. 
And for me, the feeling of safe is that I can say it and um, yeah, and feel this connection. And this is what now I feel that this is a cult, I think, the cultivation of it. Yeah, like it gives me now feeling of safe. No, I think oh, you're saying that that creating safety in this moment is being authentic with yourself and with me because mm-hmm. you don't you don't have all the answers you're you're just you're stirred up you're saying yeah. oh i you know i'm telling you how important it is to be there for my family and i'm doing all these things and am i spending enough time with them you're just being so real with me and you're saying that that helps you feel safe in the moment because you're being true to yeah. yourself you're creating this sense of okay, this is what's important i'm telling you about it and so we've gone through rules one through four already and we can we can debrief about it but rule five is generalize so what would you take from this interaction how can you take what you're experiencing with me this sense of safety that you've created by being authentic what are you going to do with it after we hang up i think that i can maybe share maybe not with my daughters but more with my wife or also people who are my friends like a very, very close ones um, that I'm having those kinds of uh, yearnings and worry, um, yearnings and worryings, yeah, w- worrying and those not helpful uh, things inside me, yeah, and and it would be, I think, the um, the generalization of this feelings safeness that 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 we you create with me and now i have a thought that i thought i said that with the closeness yeah the friends but it's um i think amazing that we've just met like in person for like uh, maybe a half hour ago or and and it's amazing how I felt close to you during this um, like short talk here. And it was very powerful. Yeah. I feel really grateful that you're willing to step into this space with me, Adam. I really am. It's a privilege. Mm-hmm. So for those who are watching, I want everyone else to feel grateful for you too, because this was vulnerable for you. And it's demonstrating something very important, which is everyone has longings. That's why they're, they come to therapy. And one example of what we can do using FAP principles is to help them talk about their longings, which is what I did. And then with you and then I asked you very specifically how can you create this right now and you said I'm already doing it but that's I think one of the most powerful things about FAP is that if they can do it in the moment with you then they can take it into their daily lives so you started doing it with me just being really authentic and and talking about what matters and not having the answers I love how you are labeling it as safety to be to be real, to be authentic, to say what's mattering to you. And then you're taking it out to the people, to your wife and to your close friends. So can you can you see how I ran through all the rules? I I started yes, I with rule, <laughs> yeah. I started with rule two, and with an evocative question, I was watching your CRB ones and twos, and and then I was just trying to be reinforcing and shaping, and just watching the impact on you. And then I 
mm-hmm. asked you, how can you generalize? What did you feel? He said, yes, I felt it. What did you feel? Yeah, I, um, I felt like, um, also like we record the podcast, but I think that uh, I just a little bit had uh, like um, a feeling that that I'm going to share our recording to many many people, but um, but during our um, presentation, yeah, I the, the the most I think I felt um, like. I can say my vulnerability, maybe it is something that it's not easy for me to explain by words, not only because of English, because I could search a right words, but maybe I have could I could have some tendencies to avoid this my part. Uh, the vulnerable, maybe it was like connected with my also past. Now I I have I see some connections, but but yeah, but I think that it was some kind of feelings that you have a mixed, yeah, uh, not one or two, but a lot of emotions. Yeah, so, so, but I felt very safe and thank you for also, like, I felt that you are take care of me, that you are like the tone of, of your voice was very um like calming yeah but but not calming in that way that like you need to like um shut down your emotions but calming in the meaning that on the same emotional level as mine i think yeah and it Mm -hmm. also creates a space where i could open more yeah yeah and if we be in the one room and if I could look in your eyes uh, at the same time, it would be also more powerful because now I am uh, watching in the eye to the camera. And when I need to want to look into your eyes, I need to, you know, turn my head (laughs) into the computer, but it would be also more like connected. But I've, I felt that I've been connected through through the your through your voice and the tempo also like um, yeah it was I'm I'm glad that you felt connected and that something about my presence also helped you feel yeah. safer because I because my heart is really with you and you can you can sense that That's I think good. I'm gonna invite people who are watching to take a photo of the slide. It's, it's basically focusing on the importance of doing self-work as a FAP therapist or as someone who's doing FAP-informed therapy. I don't have time to go over these questions, but I would suggest doing it with a mm-hmm. consultation group or with a trusted colleague. And then this is about generalizing FAP. It's about living boldly yourself. And this is how I want to live. This is how I do try to live, claiming a world where every life is precious to love in a way we've never loved before. And to take our sense of agency to help Mm. people transform their lives. And you're doing this in different ways, and you're doing this with your podcast. This is how I am really working to generalize FAP. It's through my Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project. Mm -hmm. where the mission is to meet life's challenges by both deepening connection to ourselves and other people. So we're rising to live more true to ourselves, but we're connecting other people. So I'm just inviting uh, people who are watching this podcast to join my project. There's a really powerful eight-week training, which is sliding scale. It's going to improve your life professionally and personally. I think the next one is starting in June. And so just email me for more information at mavist at aclglobal.org. I put the links also to the description of our episode. And I uh, saw also your great um, 
um, TED talk. So I put all of those important things to to the description. So maybe if there is something that you'd like to also share with the audience and there was no time to like say it, so please also send, feel free to send me all of those things. So I put them into the description of our podcast. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, been, thank you. It's been such a mm, pleasure doesn't it doesn't capture it. It's been so meaningful to have this interaction with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much too. And it was very, very deep for me to be with you. And thank you for our interaction, how you take care of me and and that, that you are here with me. It's also very, like, I'm delighted. It's something great for me. Thank you very much. And I think I want you to be aware that by choosing to be brave and vulnerable, you're really helping other therapists. I think it, it helped them understand the FAP rules better because you're willing to be in it with me. Thank you very much. Thank you. And hopefully maybe see you someday again. <laughs> Coming to ACBS? Um, I see uh, about how it's going to be with my daughter, but I'll do, I'd love to, to come. Maybe um, if there would be option to be virtually, so maybe on this part, I'll, I, I'll try to be. I'd love to be. <laughs> we'll see you again somehow okay thank you bye bye